this is the road on the way to Senator former Senator Hiram Fong's plantation. And you can visit the plantation and tour the gardens. Senator Fong and his four children, about 
35 to 40 years ago. If you'll notice the rings around the bark of these trees, it's a process called girdling the tree. They do this every October. They ring the trees here and cut into it. It goes through a shock. And then after that, it stimulates the tree and the tree has a more new growth. This way in June, when the tree is in bloom, Sandra has what we call a bumper crop of lychee fruit. Now we have these brochures. I don't know if you had time to uh, uh, go into the gift shop and uh, look around, but or get these brochures. This is the lychee fruit. Sandra is holding in his brochure here. There's the red fruit he's holding. The lychee fruit coming from China and a delicacy to those of us who can only eat it in June. Uh, the um, on the right hand side, down low at the base of these red leaf plants, right here on the roadside, uh, at the base there, those uh, they look like cactus. They're members of the cactus family. That's your little plant where you get aloe from. Uh, aloe vera used in many of your beauty products today. The aloe vera, uh, uh, Hawaiians used that plant in the ancient days for internal medicine. They chopped it up, boiled it, used to drink it for ulcers and things. We use it here. Uh, we, we all plant them locally in our yard. Uh, we do have the strongest aloe of all the aloe growing around the world. We plant them and we use them for uh, for burns. Anytime anybody has a bad burn, run outside, cut into the leaf of the aloe plant, and that's your first aid emergency. Leave it there like a band-aid, and you will have no scar. On the right hand side, the uh, uh, white giant, white bird of paradise, and we'll see more as we go along in the tour. On the left hand side, we'll be seeing more giant white bird of paradise. On the left, on the right hand side, up on the plant pole, is the orange bird of paradise. Right now, there's one blossom over here on the left hand side of the orange bird of paradise. And if you look way up on the plant pole, you'll probably see another orange blossom up there. Um, uh, where did it go? Oh, there it is, right straight up here, uh, the orange bird of paradise. But right now, this is a time of the year when it goes a little dormant. Uh, they're from South Africa, and they like the nice hot summer sun. On the left hand side, this red blossom is the Chinese lantern hibiscus, or also called the coral hibiscus. The uh, bougainvillea, all the color that you see there, the bougainvillea plant, uh, these are these are potted ones. There's some we have some uh, growing all on the hillsides, but the uh, colors that you see are the foliage of the plant. The actual flower is a tiny little white flower inside the colored part of the plant, uh, the foliage of, of the plant. This is a bottle brush tree up here. Behind that, a cattail uh, or a chenille plant is called. There are lots of hibiscus along the left hand side, and a common hibiscus and some hybrids. And on the right hand side, this is all the um, rainbow shower trees. They just trimmed the uh, yellow blossom that you see here up in the rainbow shower trees. It's actually an uh, alamanda. It's uh, some of that ground cover there, and that's what's going in front of the Johnson Plateau that they just all uh, trimmed it all out because this is also a dormant time, actually, for the alamandas, and uh, they're members of the periwinkle and the plumeria family. They do have a white sap to them, so you want to be careful with that. These red hibiscus here are... Uh, the common hibiscus, but this red was our state flower from 1923 to 1988, and then we see our legislatures had nothing better to do. They changed it to the yellow hibiscus. We don't have any common yellow hibiscus because we don't have uh, a common yellow hibiscus. Uh, it's not because we don't have one here. It's that there is none. Uh, but um, the um, there is hybrid hi yellow hibiscus, and we don't have one to show you either. Uh, the white that you see out there is the uh, native white uh, hibiscus, and the red out there in the back is the uh, I call the uh, firecracker hibiscus. These are some hybrids here on the left. Uh, every part of the hibiscus blossom is edible, by the way. The uh, pink gingers here on the left hand side are hybrids of the red. The monstera leaves with the holes in them, you'll see at the base, a uh, fruit or a uh, bud of the plant, and it is edible. The monstera leaves with the holes in them are called, uh, the poles are called pukas. These are the giant ape leaves on the left hand side, the heart shaped ape leaves, and uh, those were used by the Polynesian women for umbrellas in the ancient days. The Hawaiians used the stems in time of famine. They used to eat the stems, uh, eat the stems much like their uh, taro, um, same family, a uh, member of the taro family. On the left hand side, see this fruit up here? That's a jackfruit, the big fruit on the tree. They get anywhere in weight from 10 to 40 pounds, one jackfruit. And uh, they are members of the Ulu or the breadfruit family coming from the uh, breadfruit actually came from Polynesia here to the islands. The uh, jackfruit has nuts in them that taste like chestnuts if you roast them. And uh, the uh, jackfruit also uh, 
it has ice cream tasting fruit and that's if you can get past the sour cheese smell that it has so when it's ripe. Like there's one ripe one, there's one overripe ready to fall off right there on the bar there and there's one that's ripe and ready to eat. So if you can get past the sour cheese smell then you can get to the nice fruit. On the right hand side, the little ducks that you see out there, kind of dirty today, I don't know why, but usually they're nice, pretty white, clean. The, uh, oh, there's a mongoose going across the road there. See that little um, boat up there? Uh, anyway, those Peking ducks on the side, on the right-hand side, all of a sudden everything's here. The Peking ducks on the right-hand side are the kind of ducks from China that you eat when you order a roast duck in a Chinese restaurant, the crispy uh, uh, little white Peking ducks. Uh, the goose uh, there were Canadian goose. Uh, up in the front, we have Muscovy ducks uh, with the red masks. Uh, the, um, these are all natural spring ponds here uh, that are the home of the ducks. Now, um, for the mongoose, uh, the mongoose is, uh, that is a mongoose, the one that you saw running across without the bushy tail. If you see those running anywhere around, there they are mongoose. And the mongoose is, uh, they brought the mongoose here to take care of our rats. Uh, the rats, but they found out the rats were uh, the uh, nighttime rodents and the mongoose were daytime rodents. So we still have those two rodents here on the island. Uh, however, we uh, the mongoose we know uh, we don't mind because we'll know that they take they will take care of snakes. And so um, we kind of like the mongoose here. Uh, these are banyan trees out there, the dark green leaves. There's an Indian rubber tree, the big leaf out there in the back, also called a ficus. It makes a real good potted plant, house plant. Uh, here is the uh, coconut, I mean, uh, excuse me, the tacoma tree here on the left hand side. The, uh, there are coconut palms out there. Those natural spring ponds are here from the ancient days. Uh, the Tacoma trees here on the right hand side have bromeliads down low in the triangle below them. The uh, bromeliads are, uh, some people say bromeliads, some people say uh, bromeliads. Uh, there are different ways of pron pronouncing it. Uh, one of these days I'll have to find out the correct way. But uh, there are about 300 members uh, in the uh, bromeliad family and uh, they are uh, air plants, so very easy to grow. We do have more up at the lookout. Uh, the coconut palms here, if you don't see uh, many nuts, that's because these are the young ones called the kiki plants. It takes uh, six to ten years for a coconut to get to full maturity. Then it'll produce 100 to 300 nuts per year, uh, one plant. And they had nuts uh, they made out of coconut leaves. They made these kind of baskets. They made uh, use them for brooms for covering their huts. The uh, raw meat inside the shell they used for uh, making uh, coconut milk. And they used the shells and the bowls, uh, the shells for dishes and bowls and, and for cups and all in the ancient days. If you went to a festive luau, you would be served from the coconut shell bowls and dishes. The uh, uh, meat inside dried, uh, it was used for making lotions, oils, and shampoos. They called this copra. And uh, it was one of the important foods of about 25 that the Polynesians brought to the Hawaiian Islands here. On the right-hand side, this is sugar cane called coal. The sugar cane, uh, is the, uh, the stalks right there from the cane that you see right there from the stalks is what you chew on to suck out the sweet juices of the sugar. Uh, Hawaiians, the Polynesians brought it to sweeten the medicinal potions and uh, it was a cash crop for the islands for a while, not uh, too long. It, it is no longer today, by the way. And uh, also the Hawaiians used to uh, carry it on their long journeys. When they go over the mountain side, they'd carry the sugar cane with them for energy. They'd go over to the other side of the island um, the uh where the harbor is today, and that's Chinatown now. That was the second center of our islands. This year was the first. We had a population of 17,000 Hawaiians that lived all on the Swinward side of this land. Here was King Luna Little's land. Out here, these are pineapple crops here. And what you're looking at is actually all the tops of the pineapple, uh, which was the pineapple. You'll see a little pineapple there on the grass edge that's fallen out of the top of the pineapple. Uh, to, to plant a pineapple, you twist the top off, place it in the ground, and uh, it'll bear uh, free fruit bring it size, the smallest one known as the Ratsum crop. The pineapple that you see here is a sugarloaf pine. It's your, um, the sugarloaf pine is your sweeter pineapple. That's the kind you want to uh, buy if you're going to send pine back home or buy pineapple to eat. On the left hand side, uh, the strawberry guava trees are smaller than the regular guavas. On the right, uh, Senator Paul wants to plant his Japanese tea garden there. He also has plans for a Chinese restaurant and horse trail rides, and he has lots of plans yet for his plantations that he's not through with. On the left-hand side, the palm.